Okay. Could you introduce yourself? Oh, um, my name is uh, Masaki Hori of the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics and also the University of Tokyo of Germany and Japan. So what is the purpose of Masaki's experiment? Mm -hmm. Here we uh, measure the uh, mass of the antiproton relative to the mass of the electron. This is called the antiproton to electron mass ratio. And what we do is we synthesize atoms that contain antimatter. This is atoms that are half matter and half antimatter. We um, produce them in this experimental target. We then shine laser beams on these atoms and measure their uh, transition frequencies very precisely. What we do is we measure the color of these antimatter atoms very precisely. And then from this, we can uh, determine the uh, mass of these uh, anti anti uh, anti protons and why it is so important for the antimatter experiments to measure the difference between proton and antiproton so um, so the the universe has this duality uh, between matter and antimatter duality means that for some reason for every matter particle there's always a, a corresponding antimatter particle and we believe that the universe um, has a fundamental symmetry wherein the masses of these par and particle and antimatter the particle are exactly the same. And um, this is a belief that we have of the standard model of particle physics. And here we have to uh, verify whether this uh, fundamental symmetry is correct or not. In fact, this symmetry uh, is such, so fundamental in our understanding of nature that if it's broken, then we really have to rethink all our theories of particle physics. And what are the next steps for your experiment? Oh, yes, uh, so, so far we are trying to, um, uh, we've determined, we've measured the mass of the anti-proton uh, anti to uh, one, one part in 10 to the 9. Okay? And in the next step, we believe we can measure the uh, mass of the anti-proton more precisely than for the proton. In that sense, we would know the properties of antiparticles, antimatter particles, better than for um, normal particles. And this would allow us to probe deeper into what the, how the universe is and how these matter and antimatter particles behave. So, uh, my colleague there uh, has a normal helium bottle. And this is the same type of bottle that you use for balloons and so on. Okay. Nothing is special about this bottle. It's normal helium. We put this helium into this chamber. Inside the chamber, we can cool down the helium atoms to extremely low temperatures, like minus 270 degrees below zero. And then the antiproton particles come down that beam line there. Um, my colleague, uh, my two of my colleagues are adjusting that device there. Comes down, and then it enters into this helium target. And there we produce the antimatter, um, antiprotonic helium atoms, they are called. These half matter, half antimatter particles. Okay? And they stop, in, in fact, inside this chamber. Maybe, I don't know if you can see it. Inside this uh, window, um, the antimatter particles are formed. And then we shoot powerful laser beams from the left and from the right to the antimatter, antiprotonic helium atom. And then when these lasers are precisely on resonance with the uh, atom, we can make them, um, ex we can resonate these antimatter particles and thereby measuring the transition frequencies. In fact, we have a very large um, apparatus on the other side of this um, hall where there's uh, many, many lasers are, are uh, present. And then, so, could you explain why it is important to measure the, the weight of the antiproton? Why, why, and and what, what is the result? You say that antiproton is the same and protons, mm -hmm. 
to uh, we we know that we from the result of this measurement, we have determined that the uh, the antimatter uh, the antiproton mass relative to the electron mass we've measured to a precision of nine digits, and we found that the antimatter uh, the antiproton mass is exactly the same as the proton mass to therefore a nine digits of precision, and. Um, this is important because we believe that um, the universe. So, so now, now, yes, now, now that we know that mm -hmm. antiproton is the same mass as mm -hmm. proton. Mm -hmm. So, what is the, the conclusion? You can say that. Uh, well, we can only say that the, our understanding of particle physics, which is based on our belief that the two particles should be the same, is has been confirmed to nine digits. But it, it does not exclude that maybe at the 10th digit or the 11th digit, as, as humans, um, how to say, technology advances, we can probe deeper and deeper and to higher and higher precision um, the, uh, whether the two are uh, the same or not. And of course, we've always liked to go to the highest possible precision because we don't know whether maybe at the next level of precision, these things can be broken or not. They are actually working. <laughs> so that is uh, my colleague Anna Shota and uh, Todoroki Kenichi. Uh, one is from University of Tokyo, the other one from um, Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics. And um, yeah. So, well, what? <laughs> so, then, <they're not laughs> why don't you continue working? I don't know. <laughs> no, just, just continue. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to discuss with you. <laughs> and how the work is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, oh, how the work is going. Maybe I can pretend to also work. <laughs> you pretend to pretend. Yeah. yeah. I really look like a, a, a bureaucrat who has nothing to do, right? <laughs> This is not so very nice. So you know, hmm? you want to now upset the transfer system, is it? <laughs> that is not a very good spectacle. You know where they are? Uh, no, he's filming you. You, as you <laughs> work on your song. <laughs> so, this is the peak corresponding to the um, signal from the antiprotein helium atoms. She requested. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I could turn it on if you want. But... 